Welcome to this edition of SKNIS Week in Review. The Week in Review highlights the top stories of the government of St. Kitts and Nevis for the past week. In the government's news for the week, February 18th to February 23rd. Government of National Unity, second year anniversary successful. 300 homes to be constructed. PS of National Security, pleased with crime reduction strategy. Quality of recruitment to the police force improves. Government to enhance public transport service. STEP ensures interns meet labor market demand. And Minister of Labor attends 10th ILO Caribbean Labor Ministers meeting. I am your presenter, Sharima Mack. The series of activities marking the second anniversary of the Government of National Unity climaxed on the weekend. On Friday, there was a music concert dubbed Youth Explosion held at the Newtown Playing Field. And on Saturday, Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris hosted a reception at Government House to bring the curtains down on the events. During an appearance on a local radio station, Dr. Harris said that the celebrations were quite remarkable and fitting given the accomplishments of the government after two years. The major successes were captured in a booklet. We put this out and we say compared to any government anywhere in its second year, none, I repeat, no government has done as well as we have in the second year. And it is amazing because we are a new government. Yes. It is not that we are continuing another term. It is that we have just started. Just started. So we have to deal with all of the initial hurdles of settling down. Mm -hmm. And no one would know this better than yourself, having been part of an administration that came in 1980, That's correct. replacing one that had been there for a very long period of time. That's right. So you have to deal with issues of personnel, of refashioning programs, refashioning ministries, and then get on with the job of governing. We have been governing well, and the people of St. Kitts and Nevis have benefited as a result of the work, the contribution of this government. The launch of the Unity Housing Solutions Program, which proposes to construct a minimum of 300 homes, for low-income families was part of the week of events. On Wednesday, Minister of Human Settlement, the Honorable Eugene Hamilton appeared on Working For You to share more about the plans. There'll be those persons in the state who will not be able to build for themselves. But involved in all of that is a, an overall policy that government must encourage the development of housing and that is why in the broader context of the human settlement and the Ministry of Human Settlement, we, are, we have considered uh, the implementation of housing, especially at the middle to upper income levels through different development programs, programs that will involve the private sector. But when it comes to the National Housing Corporation, we focus on just the indigent and the poor. You may find that because of our ability to do so, we may very well move the needle a bit on what we call poor. Melissa Hamilton added that the houses will be bigger, better, and more affordable than those of the past. Officials at the Ministry of National Security have been reviewing proposals from stakeholder groups that suggested ways their respective agency can reduce and prevent incidences of crime. The proposals were the primary outcome of the recently held National Crime Symposium, which was part of a wider public safety program being facilitated by the international social skills consultant, Dr. Niels Chaitan. On Tuesday, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Security, Mr. Osmond Petty, made a statement on the process. I'm quite pleased with the symposium. I am pleased with the way Dr. Chaitan's work is going. We are working very hard in schools. Uh, we are hoping to have a big finale in the next seven or so weeks. This is something we can talk about later, but generally speaking, the presentations have been well received. Parents, students, teachers, and things are going fairly well at this time. The High Command of the Royal St. Christopher Nevis Police Force were also in the news this week as they held a press conference to update the public 
on some exciting developments, including the enhancement of closed circuit television and unmanned aerial vehicles, otherwise known as drones, as surveillance tools. However, Ian Queeley, Commissioner of Police, said the news of recent recruitment successes was quite pleasing. The police service is again becoming a top choice of our nation's sons and daughters. We encourage you to encourage them to come forward to serve. We will need our nation's brightest and best in the areas such as accounting, chemistry, law, and other disciplines as we fight against crime. And this fight becomes more technical and complex. We would also need those with language skills as our federation becomes a more diverse society. The construction of a modern East Line bus terminal on Wellington Road, expected to begin in a few months, and the subsequent improvement project for the West Line bus terminal on the Bastia Bay Road are part of the government's strategy to uplift the public transport service in St. Kitts. Minister of Public Infrastructure and Transport, the Honorable Ian Patches Library, said that this is one way in which government is given back to persons involved in public transportation and will be done at no cost to the bus drivers or bus owners. He highlighted that the industry is facing a number of issues that must be addressed. If it's right that one bus, one bus owner will have five buses and nobody else can come into the trade, these are issues we must address. And we don't need the confrontation. We are a government of consultation. Come and meet with us because we say a fair share for all. A number of persons turned out on Wednesday, February 22nd for the orientation of the newly launched Skills Training Empowerment Program STEP, which is aimed at ensuring that step interns meet the labor market demand through a series of skills-based training. The interns were given an overview of the program and were encouraged by Mr. Osbert de Souza, permanent secretary in the office of the prime minister and coordinator of STEP, to take the training seriously as government fully supports the certification of all who are a part of STEP. The effort that we're putting into this, we want you to complement that effort by taking the training seriously. We are in the process, basically, of shifting the program from an employment program to a skills training program. We want you to enter into this program with a determination that you're taking it to the end. We want you to enter this program with a determination that you can do it. And we want you to enter this program with the fact in mind that when you have a certificate and you go to the peninsula, you can stand side and side beside anybody who enters this country on a work permit. Senior Minister and Minister of Labor, the Honorable Vance Amory, led a delegation to the 10th International Labor Organization, ILO, Caribbean Labor Ministers Meeting in Jamaica. The participants looked at elevating decent work to the national and regional policy level through social partnership, experiences in the region and the proposed way forward, and also at instrument and tools for decent work. The delegation included Shernell James, Labor Commissioner, Gary Liburd, Chief Labor Officer in Nevis, and Rhonda Nisbet Brown, Senior Legal Counsel in the Nevis Island Administration. I am Sharima Matthew. See you next week as we continue to update you, the general public, on what's happening in and around the Federation.